Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Releasing My Pain question and answer presentation, Jesus attempts to answer questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Releasing My Pain but finishes up demonstrating how the audience is not yet ready to release pain. Recorded on the 25th of May, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. All right, uh, here's your opportunity. You ask some questions about releasing my pain. So thanks, Eva, start there and that's it. So Eva, if you leave your hand up so Seth can see you. Throw in your hand. Um, yes, I, w I wanted to ask about um, the global terror versus working with your facade and addictions. It's not really on the subject though, oh, Eva. Um, so perhaps okay. if you can save your question for emailing it into us so that we can answer it there. I'd like the questions to be associated with specifically with this subject. Okay. Just releasing the pain. Yeah. So if come down to Marion. You said about not n knowing and not needing to know when mm -hmm. you go through the actual release of pain and um, the terror comes through. Mm -hmm. um, seeking the answers from your parents about their life and your life and previous generations, is that just really seeking an um, increase in desire to find out the soul truth? No, remember what I said to you that if you've gone through the accepting my facade phase, it's highly likely that your parents are not going to talk to you. <laughs> if you did that before, they'd have refused to talk to you. Well, that, that means that you haven't been through the accepting my facade phase. And so what I'm suggesting to you is you go through accepting my facade phase, they stop talking to you. So how are you then going to get their help to identify the pain? Well, if you know so, that your dad went through the World War One, mm -hmm. born in June, the war started in his in Eastbourne, and mm -hmm. that would give you an idea. No, that knowing there is something intellectually terror. does nothing for you. Okay. Nothing. Yep. yep. Thank you. Does that make sense? And this is what we need to remember: is that is that it's very interesting because I see many of you doing this, you sat down, have a good chat with your parents about whatever, and I'm saying if you're sitting down having a good chat with your parents about anything, you probably haven't accepted your facade yet. And if you haven't accepted your facade yet, then how can you be down here working through stuff here? You can't. So, so many of you think you can, but you can't. It's a process that you're going to go through. And when you're at the stage of releasing your pain, you have already gone through accepting your facade, deconstructing your facade. Now, if you've accepted your facade and deconstructed your facade, by this stage, it's highly likely, unless your parents are also on the path and also sincerely working through their emotions, it's highly likely they won't be speaking to you anymore. And, and so what, what I'm suggesting to you is if you are speaking to them, talking about stuff, then it means you haven't accepted your facade yet and you'd be better off going back to that, right? And this is why I wanted to talk to you later about recognising where you're at because it, for many of you, you're trying to jump ahead here, jump down to here. You're even having conversations with people who have contributed to your pain and if you're having what I would classify as friendly conversations <laughs> with people who have contributed to your pain, then it means that they have a feeling of complete safety discussing those issues with you, which means you're not confronted your facade yet. Right? So, and I'm not saying that you will be encouraging the outbursts on their behalf or, or anything, but there are times when you will feel quite angry with them and there's times when... Like, and, and eventually they will get so angry with you that they won't even want to speak to you. I, I, I have not known anybody to go through these things except in the high spheres of the spirit world where the parents have already been gone through this, or going through the same issues. There has been no other circumstance that I've seen where there hasn't been disagreement between families and that's why in the first century I said to people you know there will be 
you, you will have there will be enemies in your own household, enemies towards you, doing what you're doing this process because they 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 want to be enemies and they will be enemies in your own household because they don't want to go through the process that you're going through. It's quite obvious. And so yes, if you I, I, what I'm so what I'm suggesting to you, Marion, quite strongly is that if you're speaking with your parents about things, firstly, it's not going to help you feel your emotion. Secondly, it's highly likely they won't assist you to feel your emotion because they're going to disagree with you feeling their emotion. The only emotion that they will agree with you feeling is the emotions that they also have that they agree with feeling. And that's not very many. <laughs> There's not very many. And very few of those emotions have actually uh, created your facade because they are the emotions that you're in agreement with your family with do you, now, either you're in agreement because you are in a facade or both of you are in agreement and you both believe the wrong thing. Either one is not going to help you process something from God's perspective emotionally. Right? So, yeah, very important to understand that. And this is where I see the majority of you are finding it difficult to measure where you're at and you think that actually finding things out from your family is going to benefit you in this process. But the reality is my family has opposed every new truth that I've stated about, about the family, right? And I'm talking about truths that they, 20 years later, have accepted. Like years and years ago, um, there was an issue with my brother and my mother and, and they processed, you know, my mother um, had sex out of marriage and, and my brother is my half-brother. Now, now... They, my parents refused to tell my brother. I knew it had happened. Um, my parents refused to tell all of the children. It was a family secret. And, uh, and as soon as I raised the issue, everybody in the family, including my brother, went, uh, like, hated me about raising the issue. And for the next 20 years, they resisted dealing with the issue, and it's only just recently they even got a blood test to see whether it's true. Right? And it turned out to be true. Of course. <laughs> Right, but of course they didn't tell me that they got a blood test. Right, so because it, because it's too confronting to have to admit that these things are true. You see, and this is the thing: is that your family will oppose most of what you attempt to do, and and you need to be aware of that. And so the only time they won't is if they are actually wanting to do the same thing themselves. They want to get closer to God themselves. That's the only time they won't. And there's not many of those, is there? It's like usually there's one in a family or a couple in the family that start off the process and the rest of the family oppose them until such a time as those people get to a stage where they're really, really happy and then the rest of the family go, why are you happy? And you say, first thing you'll probably feel like saying to them is it's not because of you or any help you gave me. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it certainly probably won't be. Mm. Yep. Uh, Seth, thank you. Jesus, I've um, been very frank with my father through letters and yep. speaking. Um, but we're not talking about releasing pain here either. No. So, no, so let's... Oh, I yes. want to get on the subject sure. of releasing pain. Very resistive to question and answer about the subject. Glennis, thank you. Um, I hope I can say this question clearly. Yep. Um, I've had long-term pain um, in my mouth, so I actually made the question up there. Um, and um, this year I've been really... Can I, can I stop you? Physical pain is not the pain we're talking about here. Do you know why? Because physical pain is the result of the denial of emotional pain. And we're talking about the release of emotional pain. So physical pain is the direct result of denial of emotional pain. So where's the denial of emotional pain? This is all happening up here. So that's all in the facade area. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, yeah I'm not explaining myself very well. Um, no, no, you're explaining yourself well enough, okay. Glennis. Yep. I understand where you want to go with this question completely. And what I'm saying to you, it's not related to the subject. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Does that make sense? All right, how are we going? Can we have a question related to the subject? <laughs> Nina, <laughs> thank you. My question relates to multiple...
pains yep. and the single pains. Now, when I look at my own childhood, mm -hmm. there's this sense that my mother was incredibly impatient with me constantly. Yes. So that's a multiple it is. pain. So there you go. You've got so so. I'll just write down the impatience. Impatient. That's a multiple event. Yeah. So you're going to have quite a lot of pain about that. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I whenever anybody's impatient with you, how does it feel? You probably get angry straight away. Well, at the moment, what's I'm feeling is fear. Yep. You know, like a impatience is the potential towards anger. So I yeah. feel I trip into fear more than the anger. Yep. Okay. I have memories of that impatience yep. that reflect as singular events. Yes. So once again, is there an importance in making a distinction or? No. Right. The single events, um, of course, there were multiple single events, right? That all created this multiple event emotion mm -hmm. inside of you. One of them is enough. You know, impatience from a person, particularly an adult, aimed towards a child, is a projection is a projection of potential violence towards the child. Yes, the child knows that it's going to be in trouble, and and it doesn't know how, but but it, it potentially could be violent physically or emotionally abusive, right? And there's the threat of the emotional abuse, right? That's always there, always there. So a person who's impatient pretty much all the time is threatening people in their environment with their impatience. And it may al always finish up outbursting into some kind of violence. When I say violent, anger or some other expression Attack. of the impatience. Now, that's going to create quite a number of different emotions in you, isn't it? So fear is one of them, obviously. You're afraid, but let's be more specific. What kind of fear? You're afraid of making a mistake. Totally. Right? You're afraid of doing something wrong, but it is wrong from mummy's definition, mm -hmm. you know, from mummy's, mummy's wrong, right? Yeah. Uh, you are, you're, af you're afraid of what will happen if, if those things occur, so there's also uh, inside of yourself now there's this feeling of you'll only do things that mummy approves of. Or things that I, what I've noticed is that if I can't get a handle on it straight away, I'm not even likely to start doing it. Yeah. There's this expectation that I've placed So you've placed got to be good at it right from the beginning. Exactly. You can't yeah. learn a process. No, right. and there's no joy, there's no expectation of joy in that learning process either. Yeah, in yeah. fact, there's only dread in that process. Yes. Cause it just depends how long that learning will be tolerated as to how, how yeah. it will go, yes. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of emotions there. What I would do under those circumstances is I would, I would write down all of the emotions associated with my mum's impatience. Which I did this morning. Yeah. yeah. And then what I would do is I'd pray about my resistance to each one of those. You see, we're only not feeling it because we're resistive to feeling it. So what I do, instead of praying about feeling it, I pray about why I don't want to feel it. Mm. <laughs> do you follow? Because yeah. feeling it's automatic once you want to. So obviously, if you're not feeling it, you don't want to. So what you need to pray about is, like, why don't you want to? What what what's the <laughs> feelings inside of you that cause you not want to? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. But obviously, um, another thing, though, related to this, is that you doing all of that is skipping over some things. Okay. It's skipping over the addictions you've created. in order to make these feelings go away. So what you really need to begin with is the addictions that this, the, this fear of mum's impatience has created inside of you. Because the addictions are up here, right? Mm -hmm. While the addictions are engaged, it's highly unlikely you'll get to the pain. That makes you sense. Follow me? Yeah. So what I see a lot of people doing is they go, yeah, mummy did this, mummy did that, mummy did this. I need to feel about that. When no, what you first need to feel about are, are the addictions you've now created to avoid that. 
Because these addictions are the things that cause you to sin further. They are the things that cause you to avoid these emotions. And these have to be deconstructed before these feelings will be Naturally. able to be experienced. Oh. Mm -hmm. You follow? Yeah. Yep. So what I, I, what I see is most people trying to get there rather than thinking, no, I've got to work out in my deconstruction of my facade first. I've got to start there. I've got to see, okay, what, it, what facade has been created for me to avoid these things? All right. So what you're trying to do is go to releasing pain before you've processed your facade about what you're avoiding with the pain. Yep, okay. And that's always not going to work very well. You well, never... it's going to be piecemeal, isn't it? Because I'm going to pick the emotions that are the easy Yeah, ones. but it's not only piecemeal, it's impossible for it to be completely felt because the addiction is there to avoid the complete feeling of an emotion. Mm -hmm. so, so it's impossible, while the addiction's in play, it's impossible for you, you think you're going there, but you just have a little dribble here and there, <laughs> and, and, and that's all just a part of what the addiction will allow you to do. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I think and in fact, and what, what will happen here is you'll cry about why haven't I got mummy's approval, right? And those kind of emotions, which are all part of the addictive process, rather than actually seeing the truth that you don't need your mother's approval. I, so, would, I would have thought basically with my mother, I got her out of my life kind of early on in the piece. Yeah, it's avoidance. Right. Yeah. So there's still that feeling of perhaps wanting her love? Well, no, what you've done is you've, you, all you've done is you've gone, uh, pretty much you've damned women because of your mother. Okay. And, and now you spend most of your addictions engaging men, right? So to avoid any pain that there is with women. You follow me? And okay. so, and, and you treat your daughter a lot worse than you treat your son as a result. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and these particular problems all come from the addictions engaged to avoid this pain. Okay. You see, and you really need to start up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're trying to start down here. And th this is a trap many of you will get into. Yeah. Because it, this is more preferable to look at. Yeah. You know, when I say to you, you treat your daughter worse than you treat your son, you haven't wanted to look at that. I've mentioned that to you a number of times. You haven't wanted to look at that. It's related to your mother and how you feel about your mother and what you've done with your mother. Do you follow me? What I've done with my mother. Yeah, you've banned your mother from your life, basically. Yeah. In order to prevent yourself from feeling these emotions. Okay, yep. But these okay. emotions are vortexes. Yep. In your soul now that are going to be in your relationship with other women yeah I see that so one of the primary things you do with other women is you're always pulling them down you don't realize you are you, you think you're fine with them but you're always pulling them down you're always thinking they're going to be like your mother and you act that way as well mm -hmm. right that's your addictions in play that's where you're sinning that right. needs to be deconstructed first you follow yes mm. yes I get that yeah. So with my mother having sort of damned her out of my life, mm -hmm. where would I start with that? Well, um, I don't see any problem with removing her from your life. That's not the real issue. The real issue is that you're completely avoiding the pain associated with your mother. And the fact that I'm probably still quite angry with her as well. about Yeah, the thing. well, yep. that's yep. why you treat women the way you do. Okay, yeah. Because you're angry with, with your mother, really. Mm -hmm. but, but your mum's not around anymore, but there's other women around who sometimes act like your mother and then you're on them. Okay. You know what I mean? So, so this is why this has to begin, mm -hmm. not this you know the deconstruction of the facade has to happen the the accepting the facade has to happen so you, what i'm suggesting to you is you've not even accepted your facade on the issue so how are you ever going to get to your pain on the issue yeah. you, you can identify your pain yep here in your head but the reality is you probably don't even know whether that's true or not in your heart because you won't feel any of that because your addictions are all in play. Yeah, no, I can see that. You see, yeah. you've got to deconstruct the addiction so that the raw emotion is able to be experienced. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good example, though, of trying to get to our pain when the actual thing we need to be focusing on is 
looking at the addictions we have in play about the matter. Yeah, no, thank you. That's been really helpful. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if we go, Rick, up the back. And on this side, uh, Robert. Thanks. I just wondered if you would mind giving us an example on how you would heal an addiction um, to the point that you no longer have the addiction? Well, it, it's a different question and answer session. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to talk about releasing pain, Rick, because, because to me, those kind of questions need to be all asked in the Q and A about deconstructing the facade, which was yesterday, and um, and and what what I want to do is give you guys an opportunity to write down these questions and send them in. And we will answer them thoroughly over eight hours or so of Q and A on the subject of deconstructing the facade or accepting the facade, um, and that will help a lot, you know, in terms of understanding those things. But if we can keep this particular discussion focused on the pain side, um, you, you, can you see how hard it is to stay focused on this when you're not ready for it? It's really hard. It is. Um, and, and that's why it's difficult uh, presenting this material with you because, and it's going to be difficult the next group too because, uh, because the majority of people are not really grasping the material and how it impacts upon them now and because it doesn't impact upon them now because really what impacts upon them now is this, you know. So, so I understand the question, it's a valid question, it's a good question. If you can write it down, send it in, we can include it in the Q&A for that particular subject of the facade rather than rather than the pain. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. And um, Rob? Yeah, this is um concerns of multiple events of having um violence committed against me starting from about age three and a half. Yes. From my mother. By your mother? Yep. So yep. Um I've had some processing. Yeah. Where I've got uh very, very angry and then dropped into grief cried for maybe about an hour. I've yep. probably done that three or four times. Yep. But I haven't felt any fear in that process. Yeah. So uh, same comment to you as I made to Nina. Yeah, I wondered, yeah. You, you're trying to get to the pain mm. and skip over your addictions with women. Yeah. And uh, what you need to do is start with your addictions with women uh, and then, you know, you'll be able to experience the pain. So the only pain you've experienced at this stage is the pain that you're able to experience without processing your global terror or your individual terrors with women. Yep. Um, you're only being able to recognise some hurt yep. and feel that hurt, but the reality is you're not going to release that hurt completely yep. until you work through these addictions with women. Yep. And, and the addictions with women mask the extent of your grief. And Rob, in turn, for yourself, there's a regular recurrence with uh, chest-based, you know, lung-based yep. illnesses, yep. including pneumonia, asthma, you know, those kind of breathing, breathing issues and so forth. That's all a feeling of just wanting to die rather than deal with grief. So, so that's going to dr trigger quite a large number of addictions with women. And, and this is why it's so important for you to address the addiction with the woman so that so that you are open enough to then feel the extent of the grief it's sort of like open heart surgery for you <laughs> you know what i mean it's like yeah. getting that the, all that sadness in your heart and exposing it and and seeing it is going to require you first getting rid of the layer of addiction over the top of it yeah, yeah. and then you'll be able to see it yeah, yeah. thanks that's yeah. great yeah if we go Sam out the back on this side, and uh, if we go Mori on this side, thanks, Maurice. So Sam first, thanks. Um, so the law of attraction's been showing me recently uh, that I actually have a, a lot more fear of being attacked by both men and women than I perhaps thought. Yes. Um, so similar to Nina, do I really just need to focus on the fact that I don't, I don't really want to feel that attack at the moment. Yep. So do I need to really just take it back to, okay, I have an addiction, I don't want to feel being attacked, I don't want to feel that, that fear and terror. What I do want is actually to avoid those feelings and I do that through addictions in my relationship. I want my partner to make me feel safe, safe. and yep. all of that sort of stuff. Um so do I really just need to take it back to that level as well? Yes, take it back to what addictions you have in play 
You're not going to get to the pain until you look at the addictions you have in play and allow yourself to feel those addictions and remove some of those addictions. So in other words, for example, one, one that you with Rick, for example, is that you want Rick to make you feel safe and secure. So what you've got to do is remove that addiction. You can still stay in a relationship and remove that addiction. It's going to be difficult because you're going to keep reverting back to wanting that. And he can help you do that by going, no, now you're doing that again, now you're doing that again. He generally doesn't <laughs> respond to that addiction, yeah. which is good. Yeah, normally because he, he wants a similar thing from women. For that. <laughs> so, so sometimes you have that opposition. But um, that, So that's good. And then the other thing is for, for you to work out what addictions you have with women. So quite often when we have an addiction with one gender, we have addictions with the opposite gender to compensate for the, what we're missing out with that other gender. And so you want to work through those particular things, work out what's really going on and how much you want it. And feel that first. Feel how much you want that, how you know strong that, that feeling is, you know. And for yourself, uh, receiving, receiving positive sexual attention from a man is very validating for you. Um, so allow yourself to feel what, what that is covering uh, with both men and women. Yep, yep. No, I've definitely seen a lot of that over the last couple of years and yep. I can see that um, is perhaps still... It's, a, issue, it's, quite, it's quite a strong feeling coming out of you, Sam. Uh, it's very... Um, like, it, yeah, it's a, it's a very strong demand coming out of you that a man does that for you. So, so the key for you... And remember, with a lot of these feelings, and now we're getting back to this again, unfortunately, but um, a lot of these feelings where... They're driven by large vortexes of pain in us, but before we'll see the type of pain that we actually have, we need to first really look at the addiction and how it's in play and, and what it does and when we use it and how we use it and all the aspects of the addiction. And we've given everyone a lot of advice about addictions in the past. There's many, many presentations we've done about addictions. So my suggestion would be to go back to those presentations and work your way through recognising these addictions in play and, and removing the addiction because the, while the addiction's in play, the pain is being masked. And so therefore, you you never, even if you can get down to know what it is, you're never going to experience it properly while the addiction's in play. Does that make sense? So, uh, yeah, does. that's where yep. you need to focus. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. Um, where were we on this side? Uh, Murray. Thank you. My father was effectively a non-event in my childhood yep. <coughs> and my life. My mother was a very powerful, controlling person. Woman. In yep. And she chose me as for, the one. For her surrogate husband. Correct. Yep. And she put everything into me and I had to tell her how much I loved her yep. continually. Yep be the best student at school for yeah, her yeah. and to be a success in the world. Yes. Yeah. Get married when I really didn't want to get married. Yeah. Have to, uh, Attract a similar woman in that process. My life has revolved around pleasing mother. Pleasing women, yeah. And yeah. obviously... And women generally. women. Yep. <sighs> I don't know what my question is. Uh, <laughs> what, what can I do? You, you, you're spot on, and that is true. What you said is very true. Um, it, uh, but, Maurice, it's like, um, again, it's like you're not going to get to the pain of it until you see your own addictions with it. And at the moment, you're, you're, you, you can, you're sort of living in the pain of it. You're expressing this pain to, in your relationships and so forth, but you're not getting to the bottom of it with your addictions, your addictions I'm talking about. So, so these, it's, a, it's a very large vortex hole, if you like, in you know, sucking the world around you into it. At this stage, you've got to look at what you want from women and why you want it, because this is what your mother created in you, these, these deep needs for women to satisfy quite a lot of different things for you. And, and that's all to do with focusing on, again, on this side of things, the addiction side of things, 
and you, you won't get to the pain until you let yourself see your addictions. And your addictions are quite intense with women, so you need to let yourself examine your addictions with women, work your way through the addictions with women before you'll be able to feel this pain that you know is there, you know it's been uh, you know, dictating your entire life. And, and in fact, it's quite sad in a way because you've lived your whole life based on the whims of the women around you. And, uh, and that means that you've very rarely engaged your own will except to meet your addictions with women. And so, so you're going to have to do quite a lot of work in that area with the, with the addictions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, yep. thank you. Good. Um, if we come down to Barbara ben, and Ben. If we go Ben, Barbara. Uh, is it my go? Yep. Yeah. You spoke of, uh, we, in the last couple of days, we had that example with um, Angel, my daughter, riding down the road and the fear of that. Yeah. And you said, imagine the worst and cry about that. Yeah. Uh, regularly over the, the years, like Zoe and the kids will be late home and I'll be doing the washing up and just break down. Yeah. And when you let go, you're there for 40 minutes or an hour. Yeah. Seems a very similar scenario. So they're late home, did you say? Yeah, they might yeah. just be late. Going, They'll be late, yeah, yeah, out just, shopping or something. Yeah, yeah. And, just, yeah. and gotcha. late from they go for a reason, and then and you're worried some, about them, and then they're yeah, worried and I start imagining the car crash and the wreck and being yeah. alone and, and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. Yeah. why is that grief automatic there? But with the fit, riding down the road, my my girl falling off and breaking her neck. And very good question. And the reason why is because that grief is a, you're allowed to have that grief from your mother. Your mother wants you to feel that you need her. So you're allowed to have that grief. And to be honest with you, it's not the emotion. It's not a causal emotional pain. It's an, it's an emotion being felt in the addiction. You're allowed to desire... You, you, you allow, they, your mother wanted you to need women, need her. Does that make sense? That's what she wanted. So whenever you feel worried about who's coming home, you, you, what's happening is you're triggering this need for mummy. This need this is being triggered. And then imagining life without her is like causes the tears. But she loves that. She wants you to feel that. That's her, she wants you to remain in that connection with her. You follow me? She wants you to need her. Do, I, I don't know if you're following me. Ben, are you oh, grasping that? Yeah. I, I, no, so, so here's you as a child, and, or even as an adult, but let's draw you first as a child, and this is mummy, right? She developed an incestuous relationship with you, and she wants certain... Th the ideal man does certain things, and one thing the ideal man does is he needs mummy. He needs the woman, right? Now, from God's perspective, you shouldn't need anyone. Right. The truth is you shouldn't need anyone, but you need a woman, right? Now, she wants you to need it, and so when you cry about potentially losing a woman, you're actually crying in the addiction. It's not actually the pain-based emotion, which is the pain-based emotion is related to the fact that you feel you have no worth without the woman, right? which is a completely almost the opposite emotion that you need to feel. You feel you have no worth unless the woman is there, In your life, right? And there's a lot of other things connected to that. But, but the reason why you can feel and cry that is because mummy likes you feeling and crying that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it's a, bit, a little bit similar to when you were talking to Jada about the... You're allowed to cry mother. about that. Okay, I'm going to have to sit with that, I think. You're allowed to cry yeah, about that. Yeah. You're not allowed to get angry with her, though. Oh, no, no, no. No. So you're going to have to get... So some of the causal pain is actually rage with women, yeah, anger oh with yeah, women. Yeah. But you're not allowed to have that. No. So you're only allowed to cry about how much you need them. You see, so, so a lot of your causal emotion is going to be completely different to what you're experiencing now. What you're experiencing now is, again, the, the addiction not getting met, well, the potential of it not getting met, the imaginary, imagination of it not getting met. And, and the reality is your mum has allowed you to feel this emotion because she wants you to feel it. 
This is how she maintains her control over you, by you having that emotion. And so that's all just happening automatically. And so you're saying, yep. where, how do you flip that? Well, again, that's uh, now a question about, firstly, your that. addictions. So this heavily established addiction is that, that you need to be wanted, needed by the women and, and you're allowed to cry as long as the woman agrees with you crying about the subject you're crying about. But you're not allowed to cry about anything else. That's why you've been so locked up in other areas. Okay. Do you follow me? Uh, I think I will when I rewatch this three or four or five times. Yeah, yeah you yeah. might need to. <laughs> and and, and the, the problem is, is that mummy allows you to have those tears, so you're allowed to have them. And um, I've felt like... She, well, the, the childhood stuff, she's, we have allowed, been allowed to express a lot of emotion in our childhood, but is that the one she's allowed us to express? Exactly the one she wants. Exactly the one she wants. You know how controlling she is. She's going to watch this. <laughs> That's okay. Is there anything else you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, That's okay. She, you know that she's controlled you and allow, she only allows certain things from you. If you confront her in certain other areas, she gets very angry. Yeah, I was, when you and were And in fact, at this stage, you've spent most of your life blaming yourself for a lot of what you feel are your uh, inadequacies when really your mother has, has treated you as if you're inadequate in a lot of areas, and, uh, and, but you're not allowed to be angry about it. You're not allowed to get angry about it. And one of the things you're going to need to do to break through the addiction is get angry about it. But, but at this stage, the pain you're feeling is not actual this pain. It's actually what she wants you to feel. And many of you are processing emotions that your family want you to feel or agree with you feeling. And that's not the same as processing a causal emotion. In fact, it's not even getting through your facade. Okay. Mm. That's something to start with there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and most people, most families have certain emotional boundaries. So the family has an emotional boundary. These are the emotions you're allowed to have. These are the emotions you're not allowed to have. And it's the emotions you're allowed to have that often are to do with the addictions that your parents have established with you. So it makes it... Pretty difficult, doesn't it? So Yeah, you're nearly flying blind. Yeah. Can you see can you see so far every question I've had to go back here? Mm. And 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 here we're still not even here, are we, on this subject of this question? And can you see why? Can you see that a lot of our stuff is about here, isn't it? And it and we think it's about there. And this is where you guys have been getting stuck, right? You think it's about there, but it's actually about the addiction, the facade area, right? So, so in other words, you're allowed to cry. In Ben's case, you're allowed to cry because your mum says you're allowed to cry about needing a woman. You're allowed to cry about missing a woman. You're allowed to cry about potentially not having a woman. You're allowed to cry about these things. You're not allowed to cry about or get angry about how women have treated you. <laughs> you're not allowed. And, it, and so what you do is you blame you, you get angry with you. Right? And this is why you also get a whole ton of spirits on you now, attacking you, getting angry with you. And this is, this is a part of the reason why the last few years have been a real nightmare for you with spirits, getting on top of you, attacking you. Because cause it, cause you, what your mum says basically, what she's taught you to do is attack yourself rather than get angry with her for what she has done. Does that make sense? And yeah. you're going to need to go through a phase where you just where you do get angry. I don't don't you don't need to dump it on her. But if she wants to be still be involved in life, you're probably going to finish up doing it, <laughs> because because uh, most mothers like that want to be involved in your life until you confront them and say, look, I, <laughs> I've got to work through this and without you in my life for a bit, you know, so that I can work through what the problem is. And the, and this is all about breaking down the addiction that's going on, and the addiction for of of yours to blame yourself. I thought I was doing all right about ten minutes ago. 
<laughs> you are doing all right, Ben. What, what, why does why does me sharing this with you cause you to think you're not doing all right? Well, because I feel off. I feel um, off track because I understand that intellectually, but emotionally, I um, feels very fo- like foreign, out of the blue, completely, yeah. and yeah, that's why. Yeah, and no, I understand, but uh, isn't it like that with every truth? Like when every tr- when any truth confronts us, we always feel like, oh, I thought I understood, but but I didn't. But and to me, that's okay. Like, yeah, it was, uh, you're allowed to not understand what's going on. Your mother created quite a large addiction in you, and th- and and she has very heavy demands on you to never get angry with a woman ever, and she loves you getting angry with yourself. She does. So, Mum, when you listen to this, you need to look at that. But if she doesn't want to look at that, you still need to progress yourself. And and crying, missing a woman, is not the emotion. That's not the pain. When I, if I end up in that place, can I direct that? If I, do you know, because you feel open to something when it comes up. When well, I, I would ask myself the question, why am I letting myself cry about something? Well, it, you know, you obviously have the feeling there, so you need to let yourself feel the feeling. But you'll actually go through an experience at some point in, the fu- in your future when you let yourself have that feeling and then you realise actually that, that the women in your life want you to have that feeling. They want you to be dependent on them. They want you to blame yourself. They and, and and you do blame yourself, and that's your addiction. Does that make sense? You will get to that point if you allow the experience. But uh, I'm, what I'm suggesting is you're only allowing an experience that your parent will allow you to experience, and that means you're under severe control, it, it personally imposed, personally imposed control. We we do this naturally. A child does it by usually by the time a child is seven years of age, a child is only allowed to experience emotions that the parents will allow the child to experience. And the child is not allowed to experience emotions that the parents den- deny or or feel they shouldn't experience. Right? So and this is this is something that most parents do in an effort to control their children. And, and it's very, very damaging on the child because the child's not allowed to feel what they feel. They're only allowed to feel what the parent feels. So when I had a feeling when I was young that, that she disagreed with and went into that anger, that silent rage, yep. that's what you're learning. That's right. And that's, that's what you're learning. You're only allowed to feel things that she approves of. That's it. And you now have grown up to be an adult male who only uh, who only feels what women of women feel he's allowed to feel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Maurice, same issue for you. Robert, same for you. Um, for Bruce, similar thing. For Alan, similar thing. Law of attraction here. And um, there's quite a lot of yeah, Chris has had the same problem in his life. So uh, quite a number of the men in this room have exactly the same issue. They were only allowed by their mothers to feel certain things and so that's all the only things they let themselves feel. They're the only things they let themselves feel. So the women around them all think, oh, they, he's a nice enough man, he's a good enough man, he'll do what I want. They even pressurise you all to do what they want, don't they? And, and sure enough, you go ahead and do it, right? Even when, you know, and sometimes you think it's, that's what makes you a good man. Yep, feel the same for you. Um, who else? Who other? What other men have we got? Liam, same for you. Dave, same for you. So there's only a couple of men in the audience that it doesn't apply to. Yep. And if you think about it, for the you ladies, a lot of times, um, the way you feel towards your man is he's only allowed to feel what I tell him he's allowed to feel. <laughs> And a big part of this is growing up and being your own person. Yeah, but don't get too on yourself about it. You've got to see the oppression you were under. 
You're under a lot of oppression to get into this state. So you've got to be careful. See, you're going to be tempted. All the men in this audience who do this is going to be tempted to blame themselves rather than first see the truth, which is actually you're under a lot of pressure from your mothers to do this. And it's really a quite abusive pressure, emotionally abusive pressure. Right? So all that pain from that self-blame, yep. is that my mother's responsibility? That's also your addiction. So, and that's my responsibility. Yes. What, what do you get out of blaming yourself with a mother who wants you to blame yourself? What do so you get? All safety. You all get safety, approval, approval, validation as a male. You're a good man. You're the ideal man. You get quite a lot of things in reward for only feeling what mummy will let you feel. You follow? In the, in the Dark Ages, it was a big problem with women. Women were only allowed to feel what the men with them would let them feel. <coughs> yeah. That's, so what happens is, is this addiction builds up. Here We're in this page here. The addiction is, blame myself first. I've been in this addiction with my mother. Blame myself before I even look at anything she's done. All right? Once you work through it, you go, hang on a sec. I can't even remember a single time when my mother has actually done the truthful or right thing. It's always been driven by fear. I had to do whatever she demanded. If I didn't do what she demanded, she didn't like me. It's pretty well the same yeah. story. Yeah. And, and then there's your addiction. Your addiction is to do whatever the woman demands so they like you, so they approve of you, so they accept you, so that you feel good about yourself as a male. And as soon as a woman doesn't feel good about you, then you feel terrible. Right, so the addiction is to, to harm oneself in order to get the approval of another. That's where I would work on the issue. Makes sense. Still not about this question. <laughs> Barbara. <coughs> that was pretty powerful, though, to just on that, I have to look at that sincerely with my son. You do. Yeah. Yeah, because it's exactly what you've done with him. Yeah. Yep. Wow. It's really powerful. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, I lost it a little bit though, but <laughs> I used to be the five minute wonder, now I'm the 15 minute wonder. With regard to? Crying, feeling an emotion. Right. Um, it can Do you feel you've accepted your facade? No, definitely not. I agree. Yeah. So what emotions are you feeling? That's it. I have no pre-thought of what the emotion is. The tears just flow. Okay. Like, and so so I there's some areas where you're making... Remember that this is not... A, um, you, you will get through some areas when you have a particular, the terror is not affecting the particular area and when um, the pain is allowed to be expressed and so forth, you will get to this pain occasionally. But like I said, eventually, remember I said to Sam a few days ago, it, it'll dry, dry up. Yeah. yeah, And that's what I find, 15 minutes and it's done and sometimes I feel a little bit easier with myself. But, but the attractions are not changing much? No. No. Everything's much the same. Yeah. Indication that you're not really getting to the bottom of things. Yeah. Yeah. Start with the addictions. Yeah. Good one is with your son. Yeah. Yeah, you've been very resistive to dealing with that. Yeah. Very resistive. We've pointed pointed that out to you so many times. And very resistive. So, you know, this is where remember I've said to you a few days ago, this is where you're gonna be resistive. This is the thing you don't want to do. And 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 can you see? You don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. You want to go there, but every time you go there, I'm saying, oh no, problem's here now. And I'm not writing anything there. It's like, <laughs> sorry, sorry for those of you who are listening to the pain Q&A. We have had no questions <laughs> about releasing our pain Q&A. And I'm now over time to, to finish off my thing. I'm now well, one minute off my time. So, so like, well, I think I think that is a very good illustration of the issue. We think it's all here, but actually we haven't done here yet. 
And we think it's all here, not done here yet. So obviously when you get to here, you're probably going to have quite a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I'll be able to answer them, and that would be fantastic. And, uh, and hopefully what we'll do uh, you know, with these Q&A things that we're thinking of next year is that we'll probably, we'll probably encourage you to watch uh, two hours of the subject you know, being presented again, send in your questions, and then a few weeks later, we'll do a whole series of Q and A's. Uh, you know, four to eight hours of Q and A on those. We'll put them all out there, and then you can watch all the Q and A's on that question before you proceed with the next subject type of thing. So that's what we're hoping to achieve. But if you have questions before then, it'd be fantastic. But I, 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 I can see here that we're going to run into trouble with getting a question. <laughs> here are the kinds of questions you, you would be asking. If I can give you an example, some examples. Okay, if you go back to your notes on the subject, the kind of questions you would be asking here are, how do I develop an aspiration to feel pain? Because at this stage, most of you don't have one, right? So how do I develop an aspiration to feel pain? How do I deconstruct a false belief? How does a false definition of love cause and relate to my pain? Anything about the subject of humility would be asked in this, in this session. What it looks like to be humble. What does it look like? Now, remember myself and Mary did a whole series of, uh, I think we well, call them q and I think we did it on, um, on the FAQ, I think it's on the FAQ General, um, on, um, on humility and we did a whole series of interviews on humility, five of them in a row, pay to have a watch of that, but that's going to apply to this subject, humility is something that applies to this subject. Um, What else could we include there as part of this subject um, in terms of questions? Oh, getting help to feel pain without, without becoming dependent on the person who's helping you to feel pain. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big problem. In other words, getting help to feel pain and having had released the addiction to get <laughs> help to feel pain. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because most, most of us feel like... Um, when we're in pain, everyone else has got to be in pain as well. Everybody else has got to commiserate with my pain. Everybody else has got to understand it and things like that. They're all addictions that are preventing pain. So, you know, so one good question would be, what addictions prevent me from feeling pain? You follow? Um, when I get help from celestial spirits, how do I identify that I'm actually getting help from a spirit who's helping me feel pain? That's a good question. Um, what loving action can I take in my day-to-day -day life in order to feel pain? So I could come up with 10, 15 questions in exactly two minutes. Um, to on that subject. Now the reason why I can and you couldn't is because you're not there yet. That's an indication you're not there yet. Yeah. This is where most of you're at. Like I keep saying that, but this is where most of you're at. And it's okay to be there. You understand that? It's okay to be there. It's better than being there. <laughs> Isn't it? Being there where you oh, I got some addictions. You know, starting to have a bit of awareness about my facade. Not yet accepted my facade fully, but at least I've got a bit of awareness. I can see how it got caused. I can see how the pain got caused. See how the facade got caused. This is progress. All right? I know a lot of universal truths. Not much truth about myself yet, but I'm becoming aware. I'm not in denial anymore. That's progress. All right? So don't, don't condemn yourself for where you're at. But you can see that the majority of your questions are going to surround where you're at, can't you? 
Yeah. So when it comes to asking you for questions about your facade and addictions and all those things, I'm sure you'll send out bucket loads of questions. Right? When it comes to getting down to here, well, there'll be fewer questions. It will be mostly the people that have come face to face with here that are be asking questions about that. And this is why we get most of our questions are in this regard. Most of them, our questions that we receive in the FAQ General are about this, right? And or about just being in complete denial emotionally. And and what what we're hoping to do is just help you as a group and as individuals to eventually get down to where it's this and then to get down even to, you know, this area would be very interesting because, and, and that's why we feel, you know, we've been thinking about next year's program, which was going to be understanding sin and its causes and releasing sin and its causes. Um, we feel that's if you can't break through and accept your facade, you're going to melt down when it comes to those two. You know, you're just going to have a meltdown with those two subjects. So, so what we'd like to do in the next year or so is help you break through to accepting your facade and deconstructing it. Yep. And and once that happens, then you you will come along to a discussion about sin, and you'll you'll be fascinated by the subject. <laughs> Instead of going dread, 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 you know, like <laughs> stay away from the subject. You'll be fascinated by it. You'll love it because it because it help. It, it's a, obviously another way of removing from within ourselves all the things that oppose our education from God. It's a very, very important part. So I think I think we are still able to discuss the laws you know the understanding of the laws because we can present a lot of material there that you probably won't find ultra challenging in terms of emotionally challenging but when it comes to applying the laws that's where we struggle that's where we get into ourselves in a problem and 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 while we're struggling with accepting our facade we're going to struggle with that yep. so it's really important that we allow ourselves to Get, it, get through this phase of accepting our facade and begin to deconstruct it. Yeah. Okay, so, um, and my apologies to the people who are watching the thing that we couldn't get to a question <laughs> about releasing the pain, but, but I think it's been a good illustration of as to why that's the case. So I think that was very beneficial. Yep. And uh, those questions that I did list at, right at the end, in those last two minutes, uh, myself and Mary, if we don't receive any questions from you, <laughs> we will probably answer those ones uh, as a part of the Q&As that we add to this particular subject. Yep. Diane, last comment, thanks, and we have to finish off. Do you have time to answer the one about how we determine how spirits are helping us? Um, I've already answered a bit of that last group, you remember? Yeah. You, in fact, I think oh, you it even me. asked it. Yep. <laughs> so why are you asking the same question again? <laughs> so I'm quite still. You're still got not it. quite getting it. No. Right. Go back to that question that okay. I answered then. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Let's get. We need to continue. Um, we need to have a break now. Um, it's. Uh, could we come back at twenty at quarter to two? Um. And uh, we'll get started on the feedback and then the group feedback.